following program is produced by the Living Church of God. Two-thirds of all people on earth do not even claim to be Christian. Most have never heard true Christianity preached. When they die, are they lost forever? Is God losing the battle to save the world from sin and evil? The encouraging truth is that the Bible offers hope for your so-called lost family and friends. It's called the White Throne Judgment. Just what is the White Throne Judgment? You need to know. Stay tuned. Tomorrow's World The Living Church of God presents Dr. Roderick C. Meredith Richard Ames bringing you the good news of your future in Tomorrow's World This week, Richard Ames examines the White Throne Judgment and now, Richard Ames. Warm greetings to you all. Most religious people believe that God is trying to save everyone on earth now. Millions wrongly believe this is the only day of salvation for all humanity. And if one doesn't become a Christian before he dies, he will go to a burning hellfire at death. Is that what actually happens? If that's true, then billions of non-Christians are suffering unjustly in hell. Masses of humans who have lived and died and have never heard the true gospel. How could they have been saved? My friends, God is not an unjust God. He will give those masses of people their first opportunity for salvation in the white throne judgment. Turn in your Bible, if you have one available, to Revelation 20, verse 11. As we'll see later, this great judgment takes place after the millennium, the 1,000-year reign of Christ on this earth. Revelation 20, verse 11. Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. Here billions of humans stand before God in a great resurrection. And books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. Here are the masses of dead people resurrected to judgment. They will have genuine hope. They will have an opportunity to repent and accept God's salvation through Christ. According to a 1999 survey of those who have made a personal commitment to Jesus Christ, 88% believe they will go to heaven when they die. Barna Research Limited determined that 2% believe they will not go to heaven when they die, and 10% said they do not know what will happen to them after they die. My friends, you can really know what happens at death. We'll be offering you a very important free booklet that will answer, from the Bible, these major questions about life after death. It's called, is this the only day of salvation? Shocking as it may seem, the Bible teaches that no one goes to heaven or a burning hellfire immediately after death. The truth is, no one will ever live again until the resurrection. The dead remain dead until one of the three general resurrections. On today's program, we'll examine what the Bible teaches about the three resurrections. The second general resurrection takes place in the white throne judgment and it gives hope to the billions of humans who have never converted to Christianity. They will have their first opportunity for salvation. They will have their first complete opportunity to become true Christians. Let's review what happens to every person who dies. If you have your Bible, open it to the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, is referred to as the resurrection chapter. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 12. Now, if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. In other words, the resurrection is the hope of a Christian. If there's no resurrection, we absolutely have no hope. 
Paul repeats this important point in verse 16. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile, you are still in your sins. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. Paul is saying if there is no resurrection, then even faithful Christians would be dead forever. They would have perished, as Paul wrote. But the good news is, there is a resurrection from the dead. Now notice another important point. How does Scripture refer to Christians who have died? 1 Corinthians 15, verse 18. Paul refers to the dead as those who have fallen asleep in Christ. The dead are dead. It tells us in Ecclesiastes 9, and verse 5, For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing. The dead are totally unconscious. They do not experience pain. They do not experience the passing of time. Even the faithful saints, genuine Christians, remain in the grave until the resurrection at the return of Christ. Not only did the Apostle Paul emphasize death is asleep, Jesus himself also used that metaphor. Let's examine that in John, the 11th chapter. Lazarus, the brother of Mary and Martha of the town of Bethany, was ill, but he died before Jesus arrived. John 11 and verse 11. Jesus told his disciples, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. Then his disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get well. However, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought that he was speaking about taking rest in sleep. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Jesus referred to Lazarus' death as a sleep. This is not what some religions call soul sleeping. All human beings must wait in the grave until the resurrection. Jesus resurrected Lazarus from the dead to live out his natural life. Lazarus had been in the tomb four days, and Jesus brought him back to life. As Jesus proclaimed in John 11, verse 25, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. In the white throne judgment, as we'll see later, billions will also be resurrected from the dead to live out their natural physical lives. That will be the second general resurrection. But the first general resurrection for faithful Christians is a resurrection to immortality, not to physical life. The resurrection is the hope of a Christian. Let's understand if one already went to heaven at death, There would be no need for a resurrection. One is not born with immortality or eternal life. Believe it or not, the Bible teaches that a soul can die. The soul is not immortal. Let's briefly review what will be shocking to many. Turn again in your Bible to Ezekiel 18 and verse 4. Ezekiel 18 and verse 4. The soul who sins shall die. This is repeated in verse 20. The soul who sins shall die. The Hebrew word for soul is nephesh, which means physical or natural life. Souls can die. No human has an immortal soul. 1 Corinthians 15:53, we learn that at the resurrection, this mortal must put on immortality. My friends, you and I are mortal. Throughout the Bible, both Old and New Testaments, there are many examples of individual resurrections from the dead to physical life. But the most important is the resurrection to immortality. There are three general resurrections described in the Bible. We'll continue with our discussions of those resurrections in the next part of our program. But first I'd like to offer you an amazing free booklet entitled, Is This the Only Day of Salvation? What will happen to the billions of human beings who have never known the true God? What will happen to those who never accepted any form of Christianity? Are they doomed to burn in hell forever? The surprising truth of your Bible gives hope for the masses of humanity and some of your relatives and friends that were supposedly lost forever. This free booklet will give the biblical references for your study of the resurrections and the white throne judgment. So call or write today. Just ask for the booklet on salvation. You can also order this free booklet on our website at tomorrowsworld.org. And if you're not already a subscriber to our bi-monthly magazine, Tomorrow's World, we'll send you a free subscription. So pick up the telephone right now and request your free eye-opening booklet, 
Is this the only day of salvation? This informative booklet is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. That's 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 501304, San Diego, California, 92150. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World. Call now. In the first part of our program, we saw from the Bible and from Jesus' resurrection of his friend Lazarus that the dead are really dead. They are not conscious. They are asleep, as Jesus stated it. Every dead person is awaiting a resurrection. In the remainder of the program, we'll briefly discuss the three general resurrections. The first general resurrection from the dead is to immortal life. This is the resurrection that takes place when Christ returns. God will give faithful Christians the awesome gift of eternal, immortal life at that time. The Bible shows there's an order to the resurrections. Christ's individual resurrection is an example for all of us. But when does the first general resurrection take place? 1 Corinthians 15, verse 21. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. But each one in his own order. Christ the firstfruits, afterward those who are Christ's at his coming. So the first resurrection takes place at the second coming of Christ. That hasn't happened yet. Will you be in that resurrection? If you genuinely belong to Jesus Christ at that time, you will be in the first general resurrection. It is called a better resurrection in Hebrews 11, verse 35. Why? Because it's a resurrection to eternal life and immortality. The Apostle Paul gives us a sense of the glory, the power, and radiance of those in the first resurrection. He draws an analogy in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 40. There are also celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for one star differs from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. The first general resurrection from the dead is a transformation to glory, immortality, and eternal life. It's a time when the saints, faithful Christians, will inherit the earth and rule with Christ on this earth for a thousand years as kings and priests, as it tells us in Revelation 5.10. The Apostle John wrote the book of Revelation around 95 A.D. God gave John a vision of the throne in heaven. What did John see in heaven? He saw millions of angels and various created spirit beings, including the 24 elders. But you find no mention of any of the supposed millions of saints in heaven. And this is decades after the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. You can read that description of heaven in the fourth and fifth chapters of the Apocalypse or the book of Revelation. As we pointed out in last week's program, there's another example you need to read about, and that's in Acts, the second chapter. The Apostle Peter on the day of Pentecost spoke about King David, a man after God's own heart. In Acts 2, verse 29, the Apostle Peter spoke to thousands assembled in Jerusalem. He said, Men and brethren, let me speak freely to you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Then in verse 34, Peter is inspired to state plainly, for David did not ascend into the heavens. Yes, faithful saints and Christians who died are waiting in their graves for the first general resurrection and the return of Christ. But what happens to the billions of humans who never converted to Christianity? Are they burning in hell right now? No. As we have seen, everyone who has died, with the exception of Jesus Christ, is still dead. These people who never had their minds open to true Christianity will be in the white throne judgment. They will be in the second general resurrection. 
This is a resurrection to judgment, and it's a resurrection to physical life. Revelation 19 describes the return of Jesus Christ. He and his heavenly armies conquer all those who fight him at his coming. Satan is bound up for a thousand years, and the glorified, resurrected, immortalized saints will rule with Christ here on this earth for 1,000 years. Revelation 20 and verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Then we read a parenthetical statement. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such, the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. The first resurrection, as it's called, is for the saints, faithful Christians. But if there's a first resurrection, there's also a second resurrection. The second resurrection is a resurrection to judgment. They stand before God in the white throne judgment. These are the rest of the dead who lived not again until the thousand years were finished, as we just read in Revelation 20, verse 5. Now, notice this in John, the fifth chapter. Jesus spoke about this resurrection to judgment. John 5 and verse 28. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation or judgment, as other translations have it. The famous historian Edward Gibbon pointed out that the first century church believed in the millennial rule of Christ on the earth and the great general resurrection after the millennium. Here's what he wrote in The Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire, Volume 1, page 403. Quote, the ancient and popular doctrine of the millennium was intimately connected with the second coming of Christ. As the works of the creation had been finished in six days, their duration in their present state, according to a tradition which was attributed to the prophet Elijah, was fixed to 6,000 years. And you can compare Psalm 90, verse 4, with 2 Peter 3, verse 8. By the same analogy, it was inferred that this long period of labor and contention which was now almost elapsed, would be succeeded by a joyful Sabbath of a thousand years. Compare Hebrews chapters 3 and 4 with Revelation 20, verse 6. And that Christ, with a triumphant band of the saints and the elect who had escaped death or who had been miraculously revived, would reign upon earth till the time appointed for the last and general resurrection. Yes, as Gibbon points out, the first century church, the apostolic church, believed the saints would rule with Christ for a thousand years. Then the general resurrection to judgment would take place. The resurrection to life is the first resurrection. The resurrection to judgment is the second resurrection. That's when billions of so-called unsaved humans will face judgment. As it states in Hebrews 9, verse 27, it is appointed for men to die once, but after this the judgment. So is there hope for the billions of humans who never converted to Christianity? Yes, there is hope. Revelation, the 20th chapter. Revelation 20 and verse 11. Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. This is the second general resurrection. And books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The Greek word for books is biblion. The good news is that the books, or the Bible, are open to the understanding of the masses of people for the first time. Remember the valley of dry bones described by the prophet Ezekiel? The resurrection described in the 37th chapter of Ezekiel also takes place at the second resurrection. Turn in your Bible to Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, and verse 5. 
The Creator of God resurrects the dead to physical life. Those who never knew the true God will now become very acquainted with Him. Ezekiel 37 and verse 5. Thus says the Lord Eternal to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. I will put sinews on you, and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. These resurrected humans will now have renewed physical life in the white throne judgment. The second resurrection is a resurrection to physical life. This resurrection includes not only the house of Israel, as identified here in Ezekiel, but Gentiles as well. The book of life is finally open to those resurrected in the white throne judgment, as we saw in Revelation 20, verse 12. This will be their first opportunity to really learn the truth. This is not a second chance, as some would like to call it. All human beings will be held accountable for their actions and thoughts. But this will be the first time for many to see their sins, to the extent they'll have the opportunity to repent of their sins and accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. Others in the resurrection will include those who were victims of accidents, oppression, and genocide. They will be healed and given a chance for a peaceful and prosperous life and a genuine opportunity for eternal life in glory. You can read more about this awesome period of time called the White Throne Judgment in our amazing free booklet entitled, Is This the Only Day of Salvation? What will happen to the billions of human beings who have never known true Christianity? What will happen to those who have never surrendered to the true Jesus Christ of the Bible? Are they doomed to burn in hell forever? The surprising truth of your Bible gives hope for the masses of humanity who God allowed to be blinded. There's hope for some of your relatives and friends whom you may be thought were lost forever. You need this vital booklet. So pick up the telephone right now and request your free eye-opening booklet, Is This the Only Day of Salvation? You can also order this free booklet on our website at tomorrowsworld.org. This free booklet will give the biblical references for your study of the resurrections and the white throne judgment. So call or write today. Just ask for the booklet on salvation. This informative booklet is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. That's 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 501-304, San Diego, California, 92150. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World Magazine. Tomorrow's World Magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World. Call now. Some may be very skeptical that God will give spiritually blinded humans their first genuine opportunity for salvation in the white throne judgment. But consider what Jesus said in Matthew 11, verse 20. He said that it would be more tolerable in the day of judgment for major cities of the first century, Tyre, Sidon, and even ancient Sodom and Gomorrah, more tolerable than for Chorazin and Bethsaida, which had heard Christ's message and rejected it. It's God's purpose to give everyone who has ever lived a genuine, fair opportunity to be a part of his divine family for all eternity. He's made that purpose plain in 2 Peter 3 and verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Sadly, there will be individuals who reject God's grace and salvation. They will refuse to repent of their sins. They will refuse to accept the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. But God will not allow human beings to suffer for all eternity in a state of bitterness, hate, and rebellion. He'll destroy them in the lake of fire. Notice this sobering statement in Revelation 21 and verse 7. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, 
murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. The third resurrection is to eternal punishment and destruction in the lake of fire. God is just. He states in Hebrews 10, verse 30, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. All the unrepentant, evil rebels will feel the wrath of God. They will receive the ultimate punishment. Finally, let's turn to Revelation, the 20th chapter, and verse 14. Let's see what happens at the end of the white throne judgment period. Revelation 20 and verse 14. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. The second death is the death from which there is no resurrection. It is the ultimate penalty. The wicked will be tormented as they stand before the lake of fire. Then all the wicked will be cast into the lake of fire and burned up. They will live no longer. As it tells us in Romans 6:23, For the wages of sin is death, that is, eternal death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. God has an awesome plan for all humanity. His plan is sure and wonderful. Everyone, including many non-Christians, will have their first genuine opportunity to respond to the true gospel, to surrender to Jesus Christ, and to be part of God's family for all eternity. The truth about the white throne judgment is an awesome part of God's plan for billions of human beings. The real hope of all humans is the resurrection. You need to study this important truth in your own Bible. Be sure to request our inspiring free booklet entitled, Is This the Only Day of Salvation? This free booklet will give the biblical references for your study of the resurrections and the white throne judgment. And be sure to join us every week on Tomorrow's World. Dr. Meredith and I will be discussing Bible prophecy, the true teachings of Jesus, and the great plan and purpose the Creator has for all of us. So be sure to join us again next week, right here at this same time. This informative booklet is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, one 800 934-5579 or send your request to Tomorrow's World P.O. Box 501304 San Diego, California 92150 We invite you to visit our webpage at tomorrowsworld.org of God.